Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Good. We are going to talk about the rest of Trevor Noah. Okay, so this is week part two of this book, and then we're going to do it again next week just because we want to give everybody a chance to pick this book up and read it. It's very, very interesting. You'll learn something. You'll laugh. It's, it's a great book. So the, this, the part that we'll cover, and I don't even know if we're going to cover this part, but it's, we're going to try to cover um, 100 to 200, okay? okay. Uh, Alexa, set an alarm for 20 minutes from now. Okay, so in this part, the, it starts off with Robert. That's his, his dad. Yes. And it kind of talks about how he never called his dad, dad. You want to talk about that? Yes. Uh, he never called his dad, dad, because it was illegal for him to even be his dad. Mm -hmm. So that's why he called him by his name, his given name, Robert. So uh, if they were out and about, people, if somebody knew that that was his dad, they would called the police on him and uh, his dad would end up going to jail. Exactly. So that's the reason why he didn't call him dad. So the interesting thing about his dad I think is that he's like a really liberal person and that he uh, had this restaurant, these restaurant businesses. Yes, I really enjoyed that part. Remember what they were telling him that he would have to do? Do you want to talk about that part? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact I highlighted some points of it. Uh, it said that his dad uh, opened uh, the first integrated restaurant in Johannesburg, a steakhouse. And he had to apply for a special license in order to be able to have uh, a restaurant open that uh, served not just white people, but everybody. And people started complaining about him uh, having uh, colored people and all, and all kind of other people in the restaurant. So they started complaining, and so the the people that comes out and do the uh, inspecting of the restaurant start putting all these different demands on him. And uh, it got to the point where he couldn't uh, meet their demands, so they told him, well, then turn the restaurant back to where you only serve white people. And uh, he said, nope. In instead of doing that, he closed the restaurant. But what they wanted him to do, oh, sorry, I got crazy hair. They, they wanted him to have separate toilets Yes, he, in a small restaurant. He was like, white people toilets, Indian people toilets, black people toilets, colored people toilets. He yes. was like, the whole restaurant's going to be toilets. Yes. <laughs> but it was ridiculous. Yes. And then that was like the end. He was like, I can't meet these demands because I can't, I can't have a restaurant that's just full of toilets in order to make people happy mm -hmm. just because probably somebody came in there and complain and then the whole rigmarole got going. Right. So he's, you know, he's kind of like an interesting person because he's just trying. So in some way I feel like he's similar to Trevor's mom. He's just trying to live a good life doing the things that he believes in and not following these horrible rules that are in place. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He I hated how to say he, it. Uh, he hated racism. Yeah. And he didn't want to have any part of it. And then, and then there was a time when Treva did not see his father because his mom remarried, and his his new stepdad was like, "What do we look like? You know, going over there all the time?" Because he had to give her the mom rides because the car was always breaking down. And, and that moved too. And then he moved too. And then there was a time they didn't see each other. But his mom would always tell him that she he needs to see his dad or if you do if he did this or that and she would she would be like oh you're just like your dad or blah 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 like she she would always make these comments never talk bad about the man and then when he got older he went to seek him out and he tried to find him and when he went there he was like and his mom was the one that told him it's time like you need to go find your dad now mm -hmm. you need to figure out where he's at and it was really hard to do because his dad was a very private person so it was a bit of an investigation going on there and then when he finally found him, he went to him, and he was real nervous about it. He was going to try to interview his dad and figure out everything <laughs> that he could learn about his father because he was excited, too, because he knew that his dad loved him. Mm -hmm. And then when he got there, he was, like, interrogating the man, and he was, like, barely answering questions. And then after a while, uh, 
he sat down and then he said, you know, I've been following you too. And he got out a book and he had every single thing that Trevor ever did in that book since the yes. time they hadn't been together. She, he had like been following him, like any events that he was in, any comedy club that he went to. And I thought that, and in the book it says like it broke Trevor's heart and made him feel so complete again. Right. Like everything was mended in that moment once he knew his dad was following him even though they weren't in touch. Mm -hmm. And that was really... If you read the story, you'd be like, oh, that's so sweet, you know? Right. I like the part where when he was talking about, when he first started talking about his dad, and he said that him and his dad lived on a schedule. Yes. And uh, he visited his dad every Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. and he would make these... Uh, these uh, Traditional German meals. And he'd always eat the certain things. Is that that part? No. Oh, okay. uh, what, what he would do... Uh, with his mom, he would make these deals with his mom, oh. you know, that uh, so he could spend more time with dad. And he was like, if she would, if, uh, let me read it. It says, so we had, we had our house and he had his. I had made a deal with mom that if I went with her to mixed church and white <laughs> church in the morning, after that I would get to skip black church and go to my dad's where we would watch Formula One racing instead of casting out demons yeah <laughs> so they're they were tight for yeah. as long as they were able to be together they always were together yes so i thought and that I, was good to know i also like the part about christmas he loved christmas and his dad loved christmas and they would have what he called european christmas yes where they would have the stockings and the christmas tree and the fake snow and the, and the snow globes and all, you know, the, the stockings hung on the fireplace. And Trevor just loved uh, having Christmas with his dad. And I think he liked the fantasy of Christmas because there was no, I guess my hair is just going to be crazy. There was no fantasy of Christmas in, in his, I don't know if it's right to say black world. Mm -hmm. Because in his world, in that world, if a father bought a son a gift, he right up front said, this from your dad. Right. I bought this. Right. Because gifts were like... A lot of money and it was a big thing like you can put no fantasy on that or and they weren't going to give credit to some big fat white guy that's you right know, they were like, hey, no but my kids no i bought this no right. white dude bought you this that's right so i and they kind of talk a little bit about that too when he talks about that part because mm -hmm. he got to experience that fantasy a little bit which he would have never really got to experience otherwise right so i thought that was cool too and then we're just going to go to this now you're in part two of the book and uh, then there's this part about the mulberry tree. I kind of want to talk about this too because I think we sometimes want to get revenge in life. Mm -hmm. And then we are like really into it until it happens. And then we're realizing like, oh my gosh, like I don't want this to happen to this other person. Right. And this is that story in the book because Trevor, he was mauled with those mulberries because he lived in the colored uh, area now mm -hmm. where all the colored people live, but he's not colored. He's black and they know it the way he acts the way he talks everything you know so he can't even though he looks like the people he's living with now he can't deny who he still is because it's very right. apparent once you start interacting with Trevor mm -hmm. so these kids they're like so once there was a girl that was like the first girl that ever talked to him she tricked him out of his bike that was under the mulberry <laughs> bush then there's another incident all oh, under the mulberry yeah. bush where the boys throw these berries at him and it gets really ugly and they really hurt Trevor's feelings and it was all over him. His mom thought he was like bleeding when he came home. Mm -hmm. It was pretty bad. And then she started cracking up laughing because she was, because everything's a joke to her. Right. Like she's going to make the best of everything. Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh, well, this is no big deal because I thought you were bleeding, but you just got these mulberries on you. Like mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a better alternative, you know, <laughs> but then he is plotting in his head. As soon as my stepdad comes home, because he's got an anger problem. Yes. As soon as he comes home, I am going to tell him about what happened to me. Because he will... Take care of it. You know, re, what is that called? Avenge me? Yeah. Uh, avenge, avenge me. Avenge me. He will avenge... I know he will avenge me because my mom thinks this is funny. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this is funny at all. Mm -hmm. Because that's how he was feeling. And then when he came home... He started to, she, he, dude, you know, was came in and he was like, blah, 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 the regular conversation. And then all of a sudden he talked to Trevor and Trevor was like, yeah, this and this happened today. And then Trevor's mom's like, stop, don't. 
You're right. I'm telling him. But he didn't stop. Mm -mm. He kept talking <laughs> about it with him. And then the stepdad said, get in the car. Let's show me these kids. Yes. And then he finds these kids. And then he says, which one's the ringleader? Mm -hmm. And then Trevor points him out. And then his dad gets out of the car and gets a switch. And he beats that kid. His stepdad. Yeah. He beats him so bad that mm -hmm. Trevor felt... Trevor saw the fear in his eyes, mm -hmm. and he felt so bad because he was like, oh, like, I didn't want it to go this far. Right. I wanted him to be scared. Right. I didn't want to hurt him, but he can't, he, he's the kind of person he couldn't shut off his anger. Once he's angry, he's just angry. Right. And I was like, you know, when you're a little kid, you're like, when your parents tell you to get over it, you're just trying to find somebody else that is willing to go the extra mile with you, you know what I mean, to do something for your case. and. I think this is a good thing because it <clears throat> we all have these feelings but it also mm -hmm. shows you how that's not a good place to be and how you know try to listen to the wiser voices in your life like Trevor's mom who was like don't do this like don't go there and it says in here that Trevor felt horrible yes he did awful never felt so bad like he just hated that he did that so you know then the kid's dad came to the house yes because the kid's dad was gonna <laughs> avenge him but even the kid's dad once he talked to his stepdad was like whoa hold up let me back yeah. off because uh -huh. the stepdad made it very clear like don't come over here unless you want me to kill you mm -hmm. and the dad was like whoa <laughs> okay but he was serious yes and Trevor, Trevor makes it a point to say that in this point in this man's life that man didn't own a gun yet Right. But later in life, he did own a gun. And yes. I just want to bring that up because if you know people that are really angry, don't let them get a weapon. No, they don't. Yeah, like, try to talk people out of things that don't make sense. If you don't have your temper in order, you can't walk around with a gun. So, um, I just wanted to mention that because I thought, like, ooh, that was, like, an interesting part in Trevor's life where he learned something about revenge, you know. And not everybody's honored enough to learn something like that before it can actually be super, super horrible. Because right. that was bad, but it could have been even been worse. Like, been. if his dad would have had a gun, imagine what, oh my God. You know what I mean? What would have happened? So, um, and that was the step set. Then, so then, then it, chapter 11, it says outsider. Yes. Then this was the part where Trevor's every single day in detention. He's always late. He has to walk to school. He's always the late kid to school. But Trevor still has this thing going for him. He's the fastest kid in school. Mm -hmm. And they have, this is the beginning of Trevor's hustle. Don't you think? I think so. Yeah. So this, so they have a food, was it a food car or a food bus, a car, a cart? I'm not for it sure. It was like a snack shack. Yeah. There was something where as soon as the bell rang for recess, all the kids ran there. And there's only so much time for recess, but all the kids wanted something from there. Uh, and, the, and that was the beginning of Trevor's first hustle. He was the fastest kid, so he would have clientele. A lot of fat people were his clientele. They did not mm -hmm. run very fast, right. and they would pay him a fee to get him food. And then he would run to the truck, be the first one, and have like 20 other orders. Right. And then make money. So every day he would make money for himself to get snacks mm -hmm. through the beginning of his little hustle life. And then that turned into like a CD hustle where they used to burn CDs. Yes. And you remember in the part in the book where he was like... The weird thing is, I'm a CD hustler, but all I know is Christian music. <laughs> People have to tell me what they want, and then I have to find it because I can't listen to any music but that music in my house. And then he said, and I don't get high off my own supply. I don't listen to any of it. <laughs> I don't think he could. I think his mom would have had a fit. <laughs> but that part was so funny to me. Yes. It <laughs> so, um... So I, I, do you want to read this part? It's at uh, the end of 11. It's right after... This is kind of like what your mom used to always say. 142, I guess. I don't know. I think this was a good little thing. I don't regret anything I've ever done in life. Any choice that I've made. But I'm consumed with regret for the things I didn't do. The choices... I didn't make and things I didn't say. We spend so much time being afraid of failure, afraid of rejection, but regret is the thing we should fear most. Failure is an answer. Rejection is an answer. Regret 
is eternal question you will never have the answer to. But if, if only, I wonder what would have. You will never, never know, and it will haunt you for the rest of your days. And this part right here is talking about that girl that he used to be friends with, mm -hmm. and then she moved to America. Mm -hmm. And then one, and and then like he was friends with her, and then one day he asked for her number, and mm -hmm. he was like, "Oh, she gave me her number." <laughs> that was like the first. And Trevor had a horrible acne. He was not a beautiful person till af way after high school, I think. Right. He had acne to the point where. It had another name. They had another name for it. It looked like a disease, he said. Well, I think he found out after she moved that he, she was sweet on him. Yes. He, he never did. asked he her. He His never asked her for nothing. And they were like best friends. Yes. And he loved her. And he used to always have this thing that he would say, like, um, I I hang out with the, the jocks and the good looking guys mm -hmm. and whatever else because I'm the funny guy. That's mm -hmm. how I get in. But right. I know these good looking guys, they get the chicks. Yes. But I just sit around and I'm the, the chicks' friends when the good looking guys are done with these chicks. Right. So that's what his role in high school. That's, that's how he was. saw himself. That's how he saw himself. Yes. But he didn't realize like a lot of these relationships that he had with women, they actually were interested in him. But he never dared to ask because he thought this was the order of life. Because he was afraid of rejection. Yeah, and he thought that's how it's supposed to be. Like I'm not, I know it's not going to work out for mm -hmm. me because he wasn't afraid, willing to take that chance. Right. But this girl, he was so sweet on her. He like loved this girl and he loved everything about her and they probably mm -hmm. would have been an awesome situation for him because they knew each other so well. Right. And then one day, like. He, she wasn't at school no more, and he was like, what is going on? Where's so-and-so? And then the girl, one of her girlfriends was like, oh, they moved to America. They had to move to America. And he was like, what? And then mm -hmm. and then he was like, yeah. And then she even said something like, it's so weird you guys never got together because she had this big crush on you. And uh -huh. then he was like, what? <laughs> right. I didn't know that. That was like the end of it. Um, he was yeah. like, she was wondering why you never asked her out. <laughs> and then... Uh, The crush. I can so then it kinda has this thing. Remember where Trevor had these timber timberlake yes. boots? Yes. And he don't even but this is all with his C D hustle and his lunch money hustle. He's mm -hmm. earning some money now. Yes. So he's got a little bit of money and he was able to get these boots and they were Timberlakes and nobody else in Africa had a pair. And then he had these two little hustle friends that he always hung out with. Mm -hmm. And then one of them was like, Hey, let's go out here and here there this Saturday or Sunday or whatever, and he was like, oh, okay. And then he said, and don't forget to wear your boots. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> this guy had told everybody at that club that an American rapper was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and then Trevor had to get up there and, like, rap, and he said he did it, and everybody kind of, like, went along with it and stuff, so it worked right. for him. But the deal was that this friend was going to get him a date to their prom, or oh, I don't even yes. know if it was called prom, with the prettiest girl yeah. in the region. Yes. So Trevor was like, all right, I'm down with that. Yes. I ain't got no problem with that. Yes. And then he met the girl, and he was like, dang, she is like the prettiest girl. Mm -hmm. And then he introduced the girl to his stepdad to see if he could get the car for the date, and then his friend got him all, took him places to get right and get himself together. Mm -hmm. And then his mom was making fun of him because he was so pretty, you know? <laughs> Oh, he had his hair cut. Yeah, and I think he got his hair straightened or something. Yeah, something because he always had <laughs> this uncouth afro going on that but, he never combed. But this story is so funny because when the day comes and then he takes her out, like number one, he's late because his dad doesn't give him the car. car. Right. And then he ends up showing up late. Then he noticed she's like really upset. So then she doesn't talk. He doesn't think anything about it because he's like, she's late. He starts to figure out he can't even speak her language. <laughs> he had spent all this time with her and never knew she couldn't speak her language because all he was doing was showing her off. Right. Never even he engaging never in her no, or never anything. Had a conversation with yeah, her. I was like, what? But that's what happens when you speak like 13 different dialects, mm -hmm. you know, and people are just getting by and there isn't one uniformed language, like things like that happen. But, and then he went to the prom, she wouldn't get out of the car. Everybody came and saw Trevor's date at the car. People left the prom to come see his date at the car because they couldn't they believe that he, he was with a this beautiful woman and that yeah. he had a date, yeah. but he couldn't even get her to come in. And then he took her home. And then like when he left, she was like, hi. 
Mm-hmm. Like, no problem. But she was like, once you're late, mm-hmm. I'm not playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny. I think that was, like, the beginning of him, like, figuring out, like, women and mm-hmm. um, things like that. Like, that story where he didn't go for it. And then the story where he was, like, kind of put in a situation but didn't even, like, try to get to know the person. Right. You know? And um, so that was... And then there's the story that's called Colorblind and 13. That's with his friend that was just as mischievous as him. Yes. And they used to go to the mall. Was it the mall? Yes. They used to go to the mall. And in the mall, the store would close. And then they would put, go in and grab these cookies and they would eat them. And But there was a video camera there. And then one day, one day they were kind of, I guess somebody had caught on. They were watching on the video camera, mm-hmm. waiting for them to show up. Yes. They did their thing. And then the police came. And then they split and ran. Alexa, turn off the alarm. And then they split and ran. And then Trevor got away. And then his friend got caught. Mm-hmm. But it was black and white camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trevor kept thinking. He was about to go to jail. Like right. all kinds of things were going to happen. Right. And then uh, somebody came to his house and told his his mom like so and so's. And then his mom right away was like, "Well, was Trevor there?" Yeah. And she, Trevor had to be in there. Yeah. She was like, "I know Trevor was the other person." They're mm-hmm. like, "No, it's it's not him. It's not him." And she's like, "Really? I don't know." And then mm-hmm. she talks to Trevor, and then Trevor doesn't say anything. Right. And then Trevor goes to school, and the detectives come to the school because they found out that Trevor's this guy's best friend, and they want to know who this other kid is. Mm-hmm. On the camera, the kid looks white. So nobody thinks that it's Trevor, even though Trevor looks just like the kid, but because they have it in their head that the kid is white, right. they cannot see that it's Trevor. And Trevor is right in front of them, right in front of the picture, mm-hmm. right in front of the camera. And that just goes to show like how racism skews yeah. everything for people. When mm-hmm. they think it's a certain color, they can't see the truth, right. even though the truth's right in front of them. And I kind of felt like that's what this story was a little bit about. But it's funny, if you read it, like, you'll love it. Like, I thought it was yes, hilarious. Yes, But I think that's kind of, like, where they were going with that. And then on, um, let's see. And then, I think this is the dance, but we already went over that. And then there was this part. I wanted to get to this part where he gets blessed with that CD burner. Because I like what he says how he words it. So then the other thing that was interesting is that um, in South Africa, in the school system, they didn't uh, teach them about apartheid really. They just kind of talked about it real quick and then didn't talk no more because they didn't want people to be angry so they didn't actually discuss it at all. Right. And then they compared it with like how in Germany there are they have a serious education about that. They really mm-hmm. talk about it, educate, you know, so that something like that could never happen again. But in Africa, because they're not really there yet, their school system back then in those days didn't even discuss it. Yeah, it just brushed over. Like yeah, it, like real like quick, because we don't want no problems. Yeah. yeah, but people are still living in that struggle, so I thought that was kind of crazy. So now, um, this part, I, I think this is one of the funniest parts yes. in the book to yes. me. Yes. 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 So this is chapter 15, and it's called Go Hitler. So, I know it sounds weird, <laughs> mm-hmm. but in Africa, there you, you pick, you have like your last name and you have your first name. Your first name is like your African name and that, that is a name with a meaning. Uh, and people are going to associate with that with you and your character. Then the second name is an English name and that can be anything. Anything. And they usually try to pick like something that they think means something, but they're not researching it. It's just like whatever's in the headlines or whatever. Right. So a lot of kids were called Hitler because... Some people thought Hitler was like a tank, maybe, or they, everybody had a different idea of it because they weren't getting educated about right. it. But Hitler, they thought Hitler was a famous person. Yeah, and somebody tough, like yes. somebody, something really tough. So if you had a boy and you wanted him to be tough, you would call him Hitler because that's how they did their African names too. The, mm-hmm. the name would represent like what your character would be. So they had this CD burning business, and then. One of the boys leaves. Then another one of the boys leaves too. This this boy is white. And this boy has the CD burner. He gifts Trevor the CD burner. And when he gifts that Trevor to see gifts this when he gifts the CD burner to Trevor, Trevor makes it a point to say, 
this is what he's talking about when people say, teach a man how to fish and he'll never be hungry, but that's not true. You have to actually give a man a fishing pole mm -hmm. and some bait, and then you may never go hungry. Right. But you can't just give somebody some type of knowledge and not a resource. And then he felt like that was his way in into making more money and then mm -hmm. having some type of a something for himself because it was very hard for colored people to get jobs. So, but, but a hustle is what everybody had. Mm -hmm. So it was the beginning of his a hustle by getting elevated to a different level where he could eat McDonald's every day, which was a yeah. great thing for Trevor. Right. Um, and then part of that, the entrepreneurship was now he had the CD burner, he could make any type of CDs, he could make them quickly, he could have abundance of it, and he learned how to make mixed CDs, so they were able to have these block parties, and mm -hmm. then the block parties were great because he had this computer, it would go on forever, but he, they needed a dancer. Mm -hmm. Because in order for something to be like really hot, you had to have like the best dancer in your community there, and uh, that, that was the hype man, the dancer. And because people didn't care about music, even if it was the new music, if they didn't know how to dance to it because they're dancing type of people and they want someone right. to show them how to do it and then they're all doing it. So I just wanted to point out like in this part Trevor talks about like how you need more than someone to tell you how to do something. You need a resource. Like somebody has to give you a step up in order for you to, to get out of poverty or get to a better mm -hmm. place. And then it also talks about Hitler. And this thing about Hitler is they got so big, they were so good at what they were doing with these parties that they, people would book them for community events and things like that too. Yes. And there was a community, a diversity community outreach lady that booked him, them at a Jewish school. Mm -hmm. So everything was great until it was time for the dance people to come out so in order to hype them up, they have to say, go Hitler, go Hitler. And then the Jewish people got quiet. Yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I'm going to try to find this so I can. So on, on page 190, if you guys are reading, that's the part where, um, where he says, people love to say, give a man a fish and he eat for days, teach a man to fish and all he, and all and, and he'll eat for a lifetime. What they don't say is, and it will be nice if you gave him a fishing rod. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I tried to read that. That whole page is real great. And then it talks about the street parties. And I want to go to that part about Hitler. So then they were like, the whole room stopped when they started, you know, their dance part. When they were saying, go Hitler, go Hitler. And then the lady said, I think you need to calm down. And I I will not. And then, and then they didn't understand, like, what the problem was. So they were like, oh, what's wrong with these people? Like, what's, they thought... Their problem was because they were color. They didn't realize that the problem was because Hitler is Hitler. Mm -hmm. So then they were feeling like they were being offended. Then Trevor was feeling like he was being offended. And um, and then the lady was like, and then Trevor was like, I will not calm down. How dare you come here? And, and oh, the lady was like, how dare you come here and insult us? And, the, and this is... And then Trevor, because he doesn't know what's going on, says, this is not insulting anyone. This is who we are. Because he was like thinking, is it the way we're dancing? Is this, da it's this mm -hmm. dance move? This right. dance move has set them off. You know what I mean? And then the lady was like, get out of here. You people are disgusting. And Trevor was like, hold up, you people. Because then he was thinking, They're, this is a racist thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then he was like, he was like, listen, lady, we are free now. We, we're we going to do what we're going to do, and you can't stop us. <laughs> and then the lady's like, You'll have, I'll, and then I'll have you know that my people stop people like you before, and we can stop you again. Now, she's talking about the Holocaust. Right. And Hitler, and, and he's talking about apartheid. Right. Yes. Yeah. But they don't know that they're both talking about different things. Right. And then here is the... the Here's Trevor. You will never stop us, lady. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you will never stop us because now we have Nelson Mandela on our side. And he told us, we can do this. <laughs> and the lady is like, like what? what? <laughs> <laughs> so then they didn't walk out of that school. They like danced out of the school when they had to leave because they nobody really knew what was going on. But I think this is just another example of miscommunication. Um. Like, usually with them, it's like all these different languages. But even in this, it's because they're segregated and they don't understand why these people are named what they're named. You know what I mean? And these people, like, when you never, people never mix together, 
simple things can be misunderstood as a racist, right. racist thing or, or this or that, but people really aren't coming with that intention. Right. So I thought that was great. And that's really, that's it. That's it for uh, the next 100 pages. So